so today, in presenting its yearly award, the National Educators Foundation takes particular delight. The educator whom we honor is, while a woman young in years, a teacher in the great tradition. The name of Evelyn Warren symbolizes the decade's major contribution to the training methods of children in that critical age group of 7 to 12. This is the period in which the character development of a child demands more than a teacher, demands both in theory and in practice a mother. And it is in this role of mother away from home that Evelyn Walsh Warren has distinguished herself, surpassing all others in her field. Evelyn. With some pride, I remind you of the supreme tribute paid her recently. Her likeness upon the cover of one of our leading national magazines, Time. <laughs> yes, a grateful nation knows her today, not as a teacher alone, but as universal mother. I quote from the cover of Time. Where mother fails, teacher must succeed. Even though we have proclaimed you as universal mother. With your knowledge of children, Evelyn, and my academic background, we could raise a family of unusual intellectual promise. Why, yes, my dear, this is a proposal. A future generation of mothers will be able to look back and point with pride to you, Miss Warren. Now, well, see here, Evie. I know it's not romantic. Well, I'm a rich man with three lonely kids. I want you for my wife, and the kids want you for a mother. Now, how about it? So that the mothers Shall we the close the deal? Who attend here will share the comfortable feeling that their children are in the hands of not only an excellent... Oh, come on, Lynn and Mary. Am I that hard to take? I mean it. You're the only woman I've ever met, just like my mother. Gee. Mom was a grand guy. Wonderful example for your pupils as to what an ideal mother can be. The award, girl, the award. On behalf of the National Educators Foundation, our award to you as Teacher of the Year. And now, Miss Warren, will you give the good mothers assembled here some little pearl of wisdom to take home with them? Wisdom? Yes, a word of advice. What do you think the woman of today needs most in dealing with the problems of motherhood? A bottle of whiskey and a psychiatrist. <laughs> Evelyn, really, how could you? Well, I don't know. It was just one of those mad impulses, I guess, like, like wanting to yell fire in the middle of the minister's sermon. But you don't dislike children. You couldn't and accomplish what you have. No, it isn't that. It's just that, well, I'm not the universal mother. I'm just a woman, and a darned unhappy one at that. Now, now, Evelyn, you can't say that you haven't had your share of romantic opportunities. Since you've been with us here at Howell, some of the most eligible men in Pasadena have been interested in you. Then there's something wrong with the eligibility rules. Maybe we need a kind of T formation. Less defensive play and more passes. Why, Evelyn? I mean it. Men are instinctively wary of me just because I'm a teacher. They respect me, yes, but who wants to be respected? Well, perhaps it isn't always the man's fault, my dear. <laughs> no, I suppose it isn't, but teaching's as much a part of my makeup as lipstick. I mean, not quite as effective, I'm afraid. And men want a woman who listens, not lectures. Exactly. Do you know, my last day brought me a volume of rather uh, spicy love sonnets, and I found myself comparing them with Shakespeare's. I also found myself alone. Gentlemen obviously had something more earthy in mind. Well, you can't discount your background entirely. After all, your father was a professor, your mother was a teacher when she married him. It makes for a rather academic conditioning. Academic is hardly the word for it. Cloisters, more like it. Why, at the college dances, the boys used to hold me three feet away for fear that father would flunk them in freshman English. I used to affect them like that sign that uh, we know so well. Quiet, this is a library. I shouldn't worry if I were you, my dear. You have so much ahead of you. But have I? What will it be like? More of the same? Evelyn, you're overworked. It's a good thing school is over. Where are you going for your vacation? Oh, I don't know, really. I thought I'd just get in my car and drive. I think I'll drive north. Northern California. Maybe Nevada. Oh, until I can find some place where I can forget I'm a teacher. And if I can forget long enough, who knows? Nevada. I have a nephew who teaches at a college near Reno. He could introduce you to lots of interesting people. Is he, uh, eligible? Definitely T formation. I'll write him your coming and hold him personally responsible for showing you a good time. Oh, thanks. Oh, Mrs. Howell, if only he won't treat me like a mother. <laughs> T formation? Oh, no, Ronald, please. You don't like it? Well, I, I don't know. I've never wrestled an octopus before. Well, I'm simply following Aunt Bess's instructions. She wrote me to show you a good time. Oh, I know, but 
can't we start with something a little more abstract? We certainly can. Have I told you about my work at the university? I'm conducting a seminar on advanced mathematics. Yes, you know. yes, you told me all about it. Please, Ronald, can't we go someplace and dance? The other day I developed an irrational equation in quantum mechanics that was almost sexy. If you'll excuse the word. I hope you'll be very happy together. Please, Ronald, let's It employs the use of thirds in addition to my own system of numeration. First, let us take HC, where H is Planck's constant and C is the speed of light. I want to dance. Did you say dance? Yes. Well, isn't dancing mathematical in a way? Well, no. But gambling is. Gambling? Yes, you see, I have a mathematical system for prognosticating the sequence of the dice. It's based on the formula of recurrent quotient. Uh, X equals 5 plus 4 minus 3 equals oh, minus 2. All right, all right, Ron. We'll, we'll go someplace and we'll gamble the night away. <laughs> Driver, take us to Braddock's. Okay, Professor, only if you want me to wait for you, you've got to give me the return fare in advance. Why? I heard you say you got a system. Huh? Did you miss? What did you miss, sir? Well, so this is a gambling casino. Rather tastefully upholstered for a sink of iniquity. Huh. Oh, you've never been in one before? A gambling establishment, I mean, not a sink. Oh, it's thrilling. It's really exciting, don't you think? Here you see the laws of mathematics slowly, ruthlessly working their inexorable will upon human emotions. I should think it'd be much simpler if the dice were loaded. You better let me take it first. You might be tempted, and after all, uh, you have an assistant. What do you mean I'm not going to play at all? Well, later, perhaps. First, I must establish my opening patterns. Once established, however, it's simply a matter of lightning calculation to predict with 86.4% accuracy the recurrence quotient of the dice. Why don't you play the slot machines? Here's a quarter. Thank you. Another lemon. He sure is. Good evening. Good evening. Have you anything good for acute boredom? How about a champagne cocktail? Oh, no, bourbon old fashioned. I'm a school teacher. Strict budget and simple tastes, you know. Freaking Carl. Are they in there? Waiting. No, thanks. Takes a clear head for business. You see, we have a proposition. The same one? Not exactly. We've decided to increase the offer, 15 grand. Yeah, you see, Matt, you got a nice joint here. We're willing to pay good for Forget it. Forget it. I don't like the way you guys operate, or what you'd do to my place if you got your hands on it. Now, wait a minute, boy. Wait a minute. Easy, Rick. All right, honest John. How's this? We're up at another 10. Will that make it easier to sleep nights? And that's as far as we go. Take it or the boys will do it the hard way for you. Yes, Matt? I don't want to be disturbed. I'm having a business conference with these gentlemen. Okay. Well, now, that's more like it. Go in and take out the garbage. The laws of mathematics say that's your uh, third drink, miss. Don't you think you ought to give up? You know something? I think you're right. Oh, I haven't got my bag with me. I... It's all right, miss. Just sign the slip. Oh. Thank you. Evelyn? Fine. I owe you. How nice of you to trust me. Bye. Uh, pardon me. Hmm? You positive you don't have to drive? As a matter of fact, I think I'll um, fly home. Excuse me while I clear the north runway. Crosswind, you know. That's all. No more rest, please. Seven on the red. Well, a lucky train. I'll take some of those uh, pretty yellow ones. Uh, Sixteen. It's my birthday. Oh, excuse me. Surely. Man's quite a flirt, isn't he? No more bets, please. 
three on the red. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I'll need some more, won't I? I'm afraid you will. On the black. What's your birthday? January the 21st, 1898. Your boy again. Four. That's all. No more that's. Fourteen on the red. Nobody there. Another stack? Oh, no, I think I've had my flip. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I don't have my purse with me. That's all right, miss, if you'll just sign the slip. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, excuse me. Surely. There you are. I'll be back in a little while. You may present your check at the cashier's window and reclaim this. Oh, no, I'll pay cash. Thank you. What was the amount? 7000 miss. I beg your pardon? 7000 Dollars? Yes. But that's impossible. I... You had seven stacks of ten each. Now, see here, I know you have no respect for tourists, but after all, they can read. And those chips are plainly marked one dollar each. Oh, no. Those are one hundred dollars each. Oh, no. Well, I'm not going to pay it. The idea. You might tell people what chips are worth before you go shoving stacks and stacks at them. All right, miss. Let's go see the boss. Take over, Joe. The whole thing's ridiculous. And I, for one, am not going to stand for it. Mr. Braddock, can I go right in, John? Get your bus down, folks. A new shooter's coming out. Quotient of x equals 5 plus 4 minus 1 third equals minus 2. That means crap. A dollar says the man loses. Number 11, the winner. can't understand. Recurrent quotient of x equals 5 plus 4 minus 1 third equals minus 2. Still means crap. Says she thought the yellows were a buck. Okay, Charlie. Then you're... Matt Braddock. And I thought you... Well, never mind what I thought. Well, what do you propose to do about this idiotic mistake, Mr. Braddock? I'm interested in what you're going to do about it, Miss uh, Warren. Sit down, won't you? Did you have a drink? I don't drink. <laughs> oh, I got hold of some bad bromo, huh? Well, that is, I'm not used to drinking. That's how the whole thing happened. I'm not the carousing type that frequents places like this. I'm a woman of some substance in my community and eminently respectable. <laughs> you're telling me you certainly are, Miss Warren. What was that quote exactly? Oh, here. Where mother fails, teacher must succeed. Oh, then you know who I am. I thought I did when I saw you outside, but I couldn't place you as a cover girl. All right, Miss Warren, you owe me $7,000. But I can't pay you. I haven't got that much, Let's really. Let's bypass the dramatics. We play this scene here three times a week. Please tear up that IOU. I shouldn't have come here. I haven't got the money. So that the lady can come back again the next night with a fresh steak and clip me for a bundle. You're <laughs> insulting. Then I suppose a gambler has such slight acquaintance with honesty. Just a minute. May I remind you, Mr. Braddock, that I am a schoolteacher, and that the number of schoolteachers who store their money in barrels is amazingly small. Yeah, I forgot. Well, I assure you that $7,000 is much more than I earn in a whole year. So this time, I'm, I'm afraid you'll just have to make some other arrangement. Maybe we can, Miss Warren. I've got an idea. Let's talk in here, more privacy. Isn't that a rather obvious place to get ideas? Well, you want to get rid of this, don't you? Within certain limits, yes. You set the limit, Miss Warren. Well, aren't you going to sit down? I prefer to stand. We won't be here long. Well, that depends on you. Cigarette? Oh, thank you. You want to light that or throw it away, just as it is? Oh, I must have been thinking. I'll bet you were. Here, try a whole one. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Oh, 
Okay, operator, put her on. Hello, sweetheart, how are you? Oh, darling, you got me so worried. You're not getting enough rest. It wasn't such a bad dream, Daddy. It's just those silly rabbits. You know, the ones with the long, long teeth. Well, they grew and grew and grew. No, Daddy, not the teeth, the rabbits. Until they were so big that I couldn't see them anymore. Well, that was quite a dream, wasn't it? Now, don't worry, darling. I've got a great big surprise for you that's going to make you very happy. Oh, swell. And this time, I'm really going to do something good about it. Yes, I'll see you soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, Daddy. That's a call I get every night from a very dear little lady. Yes, I couldn't help hearing. Now, if we can just take care of our little business matter, I'd like to go. My escort's waiting. All right, I'll lay it on the line. You owe me $7,000 and you haven't got it. But you can work it out. Work it out? That's right. I have a nine-year-old daughter, Diane. That's her I just spoke to. I want you to be her companion for the next few weeks at my summer home in Carmel. We'll go there tomorrow. Have you gone crazy? No, I don't think so. There's something wrong with my little girl, and I'm going to find out what it is, or it cost me ten times 7000 Well, it might be less expensive if you were to consult a doctor, Mr. Braddock. I've had doctors, plenty of them. But this is something they don't know anything about. It's something inside. She mopes a lot, moons around, doesn't seem to take an interest in anything. Now, you know kids like nobody else. You're the best in your line. All right, I'm hiring the best. Thank you for your offer. But there are hundreds of teachers equally as competent. Oh, I've had private teachers all sorts. I need someone who is more than just a teacher. Someone like you. Well, I appreciate your fatherly concern, but I am not for hire, as you so delicately put it. Besides, it really isn't such a difficult problem. Sounds to me as though your little girl simply needs a mother. Her mother died two years ago. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but I can't You've help You've got you. the problem all wrong, teacher. I don't need your help. It's Diane. Find out what's wrong with her, snap her out of it, and I tear up the IOU. And what if I refuse? Then you'll force me to do something I'd rather not do. This wouldn't look good in the papers, from the cover of Time to the front page of a scandal sheet. You wouldn't dare. That's, that's blackmail. Call it what you like. I do a lot more than that for Diane. Besides, I'm not offering you such a bad deal. Figure it out for yourself. You owe me $7,000. With your talent, you ought to be able to cure Diane and move five weeks or so. At that rate, you'll be making more than $1,000 a week and all expenses paid. Not bad for a teacher on a vacation. In fact, there's a soft touch for you. Well, do we go to Carmel in the morning? Why, it's worse than blackmail. It's practically kidnapping. All right, tell you what I'm going to do. I'll cut your high card for the IOU. If you win, I tear it up. If you lose, it's Carmel. Well, I see I have no choice. You better shuffle them. Those aces lay awful easy in a new deck. That's hard to beat. Well, what do you know? Ace. All right, where do I pick you up in the morning and what time? At the Victoria Hotel. And not before 10 o'clock. You haven't spoken a dozen words since we left Reno. How would you feel, Mr. Braddock, if you were forced into giving up a well-earned vacation under such unpleasant circumstances? Oh, it's not going to be as bad as you think. Diane's a pretty swell kid. You'll have a lot of fun with her. Well, we're almost there. Take a look at that beautiful beach. Might make you feel better. I have seen the Pacific Ocean before, thank you. Marie. Diane Braddock. Every meal it's the same thing. I cook and all you do is nibble. Nibbling is only for mice. I'm just not hungry. Oh, well, Mr. Braddock, we didn't expect you until later in the week. Yeah, I know. I changed my mind suddenly. Oh, well, where's everybody? Not! Position! Hey! Whoop! Whoop! Ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> this is Marie, a little something I stole from the circus. She runs my house, my family, and me. <laughs> Marie, this is Miss Warren. Enchanté, mademoiselle. How do you do? Daddy! Oh, hi, you're plugged in. Did you miss me? Sure did. Oh, oh. Let's take a look at you. 
Well, how's my big girl been feeling? Oh, all right. You been eating good? Pretty good. Oh, you gotta eat. You know, I don't want to have an old bag of bones rattling <laughs> around the house. <laughs> oh, excuse me. This is my little daughter, Diane. Diane's Miss Warren. Hello, Diane. Hello. My, you're quite a young lady, aren't you? How old are you? Yes. Well, I'm not sure that I can. You're not a teenager yet, are you? No, I'm nine years old and two months. No. Well, I'd certainly never have guessed it. You're so very grown up, Miss Braddock. You may call me Diane if you like. Thank you. How old are you? Oh, well, I'm quite ancient, Diane. Must I tell? No, I understand. Miss Warren's spending summer with us. She's your new teacher. Oh, goody, that's wonderful. Teacher? Well, you don't look like any of the others, but if he says you are, you are. Welcome, mademoiselle. Thank you. I assure you I'm a teacher and that I'm here in that capacity alone. You'll enjoy it here, Miss Warren. Besides school, there is plenty sun, plenty beach, and plenty ocean. Yes, it seems almost impossible to spoil such a lovely setting. But it can be done. Show Miss Warren a room, Marie. Huh? How about you? Are you going to stay down, too? No, not this time. I have some business in San Francisco. I'm leaving after dinner. Oh, that's too bad. I thought we could play a little pinnacle. <laughs> that's how she salts it away for her old age. She always beats me. Beats you? That's easy. I cheat. <laughs> Tonight, I'll cook a wonderful dinner. Du mouton à la marie. Thank you, no. Just a tray in my room. I'll see Diane in the morning. Teacher, huh? Who's teaching who? <laughs> now you finish your cereal. It will make you strong like a horse. But I don't want to be a horse. So don't eat your cereal and be a mule. Good morning, Miss Warren. Good morning. This is Pluto. Oh. What's our schedule, Miss Warren? Daddy said you were going to teach me my lessons just like in school. Well, I see your father's arranged everything with his customary efficiency. Very well. We'll begin some schoolwork after breakfast. I'm finished. I'll get pencils and paper and things ready. Come on, Nance. Well, mademoiselle, what's for breakfast? We have orange juice, tomato juice, fruit, bacon, ham, eggs, any style at all, but no fried potatoes. They are too greasy. And plenty of coffee. No, thank you. Just orange juice and coffee, please. Oh, but you must eat more. Mr. Braddock doesn't like skinny women rattling around the house. I am not interested in what type of woman arouses Mr. Braddock. So, it's him you do not like. Okay, let me tell you what kind of a man he is. He's a tough guy with a soft towel, but a good friend. He'll be very, very kind to you. Please, I can't discuss him on an empty stomach. Among the members of the Jamestown colony, one of the few who were able to make friends of the ab... ab Miss Warren, how do you pronounce this word? Aborigines. It means natives. Thank you. One of the few who were able to make friends of the Aborigines was Captain John Smith. Oh, I remember him. He married the Indian girl Pocahontas, didn't he? Didn't he, Miss Warren? Didn't he what, dear? Marry Pocahontas. Oh, no, that's just a legend. Go on, Diane, read your lesson. Captain Smith was quick to realize that what appeared to be unfriendliness on the part of the Indian was simply his natural reserve. He is tough guy, but with a soft heart. He will be very, very kind to you. That'll be all for today, Diane. You may run along and play if you wish. Miss Ward. Hmm? Would you go for a swim with me? No, I... I'm sorry, I don't feel like it. I think I'll go to my room. Your hair is all messy. Come on, Flute. How about a cookie and a glass of milk, huh? Yes? No, Marie. No. Oh, such a darling baby to be so unhappy. Marie, Miss Warren doesn't like me. Such talk, of course she likes you. Who wouldn't? Look, it's about time for your daddy to call. Good night. Good night, Marie. Hello, Marie. I was just going to say goodnight to Diane. There are lots of things you should say to Diane. Hello? Hello, Daddy. 
How are you? Are you still in San Francisco? Oh, I'm pretty good. Oh, all right, I guess. And how did it go today, Puckins? Oh, I see. Of course, maybe it's just that she didn't feel good, but I kind of felt that she was mad at me or something. Don't worry, honey. Everything's going to turn out all right. Now, be a good girl and say your prayers for me, huh? Well, sure, I'll be home tomorrow. I've got to spend some time with you. Oh, that'll be wonderful. All right, Daddy. Dear Father in heaven, look down from above on those who are kind to us, those whom we love. God bless Daddy, God bless Marie, and, and God bless Miss Warren. And please, God, make her like me. Diane. I'm so ashamed, Diane. I took my nasty temper out on you. And you do like me? Of course I do. I think you're the nicest little girl I ever met. And I'm going to make you happy. Wait and see. Oh, I am happy now. <laughs> well, then, what are we both crying for? Oh, heavens, Diane, it's a good thing you don't wear mascara. It doesn't stand up very well in salt water. I do wear nail polish sometimes when I'm sure Daddy won't catch me. <laughs> you darling. And you know what? Tomorrow we're going to forget all about Captain John Smith and composition and spelling and get to know each other. Really know each other. Oh, that'll be super. Will you go swimming with me? <laughs> Till I'm waterlogged. <laughs> but right now, I think you ought to go to sleep, don't you? Good night, Miss Braddock. Good night, Miss Warren. Sweet dreams. Oh, Pluto, she likes us. It's good you are here. Where's Diane? She's with that teacher you hired. What's going on, Marie? Anything wrong? Oh, maybe nothing is wrong. Maybe I am wrong. It's not for me to say anyway. You can find out more from her. Yeah, I will. Well, where is she? She took Diane to the beach for a swim before dinner, which she don't eat and stays in her room. Unpleasant surprise. Let's stop the small talk and get right down to the insults. What have you been doing to Diane? Doing to her? I don't understand. She cried on the phone last night and said something about you're not liking her. If you've been deliberately mean to the child, that's heading below the belt. I didn't figure you to play it that way. I find discussing things with you extremely trying, Mr. Braddock. Why don't you get your report from Diane? Daddy! Daddy! Hi, Puckins. Hey, you're all wet. Miss Warren and I've been swimming, and I taught her to dive in the waves just before they break. She got her mouth all full of sand. Are you getting along all right with Miss Warren? Oh, yes, yeah, she's loads of fun. Well, last night, I thought you sounded unhappy, and you said oh, that... Oh, that was all a mistake, Daddy. I was just imagining things. She wasn't mad at me at all. She says she likes me better than any little girl she's ever met. I guess you just don't understand us women, Daddy. I've got to hurry and catch her. She's going to do my hair a new way for dinner. Golly, she's got so many wonderful things for us to do. Bye! Good. 
Soaking up the moonlight? You startled me. Well, I don't wonder. You've managed to keep me pretty much of a stranger the last week or so, and I'd like to be a friend. No, I would, on a level. What's wrong with me, anyway, besides the way I do business? I don't know, but I'm sure there must be something. Well, this is going to be tougher than filling a nine-high straight with a pinochle neck. Just what's behind this sudden peace offensive, Mr. Braddock? Diane. She gave me quite a talking to this afternoon. She's upset because, well, you've made it pretty obvious that you hate Mike. And she don't like me. Well, I can hardly be blamed for that. No, as a matter of fact, she thinks it's all my fault. Which it is, but that doesn't help me. I gotta break up this Cold War or lose Diane's respect. Seems you're alienating my daughter's affections. Isn't that a rather tattered white flag you're waving? <laughs> no, not really. She thinks you're a pretty wonderful person, Miss Warren. So do I, for that matter. Ah, oh, you're doing a great job with this bride. Believe me, I appreciate it. Nonsense. I told you once before, there's nothing wrong with Diane that a mother's affection won't cure. I'm just supplying a reasonably accurate facsimile. Well, that's not just that mother of Diane. I know. You give Diane anything except the one thing that she really needs. Well, I'm not it. Nor do I want to be. All I want is to leave this place just as soon as possible. Look, Miss Warren, you want to get away, huh? Okay, here's all that's holding you up. Stay a couple of more weeks. Be nice to me, just for Diane's benefit, and I'll tear this up. You still make all your requests with brass knuckles, don't you? Well, all right, if this is all the standing between me and a beautiful friendship, just show good faith. You see, I believe in your better nature, even if I haven't got one. Well, Mr. Braddock, now it's your turn to lose a bet. Huh? You mean you'd walk out on me after I burnt that up? I mean precisely that. To explain it in terms you can understand, I quote one of the commandments of your sordid profession. Never give a sucker an even break. Well, you made one out of me. Now you see how it feels. But before I go, and I am most certainly going, let me try to express the supreme contempt I feel for you. You're cheap, you're arrogant and common, and all the adjectives strong enough to describe something low, including those too strong for a lady to use. Well. So if you will please call a cab, I'll be packed in 15 minutes. The longest 15 minutes I'll ever spend. Oh, Miss Warren. I, uh, wouldn't hurry that packing if I were you. You'd want to take this with you when you go, in two weeks. But... But you destroyed it. Oh, that. Oh, I got a lot of those. But only one autographed by the teacher of the year. To quote a commandment, never give a sucker an even break. Well, you certainly got yourself into a nice mess, didn't you? Cheap gambler. You. Teacher, come back here. Take a good look at yourself. That's it. A good look. Aren't you ashamed? Ashamed? Why should I be? I haven't done anything. That's just it. You haven't done a thing. But you've let our Mr. Braddock push you around like a poker chip. But there's nothing I can do. He can ruin everything I've built up if he wants to. But he doesn't really want to. He simply wants you to be nice to him. Be nice to him. Don't be stupid. All he wants is a mother for his child. Here it comes again. That old fear. Men only want you for a mother. Well, here's a chance to prove that you can make a man want you for yourself. You, uh, think I can do it? Well, he's only a man. And if you can't, you ought to be drummed out of our sex. It's now or... Never, Miss Warren. Come. Are you a woman or a mouse? All right. You just watch this woman teach a new pupil a few lessons. Hey, Perkins. Take these into Maria. Have a cook them for dinner, huh? Right, Daddy. I just want a minute alone to thank you for a swell day. You're mighty nice. Surprised you, didn't it? <laughs> yes, after last night. Just the result of a little quiet thinking. I mulled and I mulled some more and finally came to the not so brilliant conclusion that I might as well accept the situation as gracefully as I can. You were mighty graceful today. 
Well, I, I'll try to be every day. After all, it's only for a couple of weeks, and both the setting and the people are quite nice. When one takes time to look. It's friends, then. Daddy's doing what I told him, and see, she likes him already. Now you are wanting your father's life altogether, huh? Well, somebody has to help him, Marie. You know how men are. No, I don't. But I've got a few memories. Maybe... Maybe it'll get even better if I work hard at it. Do you think so, Marie? With two women scheming, your daddy has no more chance than these other poor fish. <laughs> Good evening. And I'd like to add a long, low whistle. Oh, well, this was Diane's idea. She asked me to please dress up real pretty for dinner tonight. Yeah, you sure did. You sure are. Uh, why, thank you. You're quite tropical and dashing yourself, Mr. Braddock. Diane's idea, too. Well, it looks like we're having a party. Dinner is served, Mr. Braddock. Oh, already? All right, Minnie. Well, no time for a cocktail, I'm afraid. Marie gets furious when you keep having dinner out of me. Well, what about the others, Minnie? Oh, Miss Diane isn't coming down for dinner. She's got a stomach ache. Stomach ache? Are you sure? Why, well, she was all right a little while ago. What about Marie? She won't be here either. It's that back of hers again. You know how it is. No, I don't know how it is. Well, I'm telling you, it hurts. It appears that Miss Diane had quite a lot of ideas tonight. Oh, I told you she was going all out to make us friends, but I had no part of this, so help me. I doubt that you could have done better. Perhaps a bit more subtle, but there's something refreshing in a child's direct approach. <laughs> Let's not disappoint her, shall we? I'm looking forward to it. It worked, Marie, it worked. You're a good little schemer, my girl. Doesn't Daddy look handsome? I know Miss Warren just won't be able to help liking him. <laughs> I took no chances. I included a big bottle of champagne. This will go with a sparkle in your eyes. You make very pretty talk when you want to, Mr. Braddock. I want. If uh, toasts aren't old-fashioned, I think we should drink to our absent hostess. I think Diane's going to be a big help to her daddy as she grows up. To friendship, Miss Warren. And I think we might begin with first names. Formality doesn't seem to go well with candlelight and wine. To friendship, Evelyn. Platonic, but pleasant, Matt. From now on, it's not for children. And we go to bed. Lovely dinner, lovely wine. Lovely evening. And more coffee? Mm. And brandy? No, I think Marie's dinner should remain unmolested. What I need is a nice, long walk. Like all the way to the front door to repel intruders. You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, I didn't know you were back in the States, Kay. I got into Frisco this afternoon. I called your office. They told me you went to Carmel, so came straight here to see what you're up to, you beautiful wretch. Well, this certainly is a surprise. I thought you... This name's loaded with rompers, ain't she? Uh, what was the matter with the Riviera? Movie actresses give you too much competition? Oh, competition for what? <laughs> at that, I almost married one of those curious creatures the tide leaves on the beach at Cannes. Are you glad to see me, laddie? Well, it's it's uh, sort of unexpected. Oh, darling, you know I'm just an old homing pigeon. <laughs> oh, this is Miss Warren. Uh, Miss Warren, Miss Stoddard. How do you do? How the... How do you do? Uh, Miss Warren's spending the summer with us. Uh, she's Diane's teacher. Teacher? Well, I'm sure you're learning something too, dear. <laughs> well, I'm not working at it. This is my sabbatical. I'm delighted Matt's gotten sensible at last. At least you're not one of those silly young things. You seem more settled. Why, thank you. I just wait until you see me in my low heels and a tweed. Uh -huh. McKay's an old friend of the family's. Why, Matt, don't be stuffy. Miss Warren isn't a bit prim. No, I pretend. I'm an old flame down to burn over the weekend. Oh, you won't mind. You'll be busy with Diane. Go mix me a drink, will you, love, while Miss Warren and I get to know and loathe one another. Oh, nothing for me, Matt. I'm for bed. Good. Uh, we're getting up very early in the morning for our hike. Hi. You'll join us, won't you, Miss Stoddard? 
Oh, Matt, you'll take care of the bags, won't you? All of them? Watch this. Nothing. Olives. Uh-huh. Nothing. Pickles. Oh, this is a difficult one. Nothing. Potato salad. Hey, why are you frowning, darling? That Miss Stoddard. Why did she have to come here? She's gonna ruin everything. How can Daddy make Miss Warren like him with Miss Stoddard around all the time? Jeepers, they won't be able to be alone for a single minute. Marie, I've just got to think of something. He can very well ask her to leave. She's no friend. Besides, maybe he doesn't want her to go. Oh, good morning. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning. Everything? everything. Chicken, salad, coffee, milk, and a nice bottle of wine. Oh, good. We'll pick up the ants when we get there. <laughs> good morning, good everybody. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are we all ready? It's almost 7 o'clock. Gee, this is going to be a swell day. <laughs> Come on, Diane. We'll meet you out front, man. Good. This time, I think you'll be the right teacher. Yeah, she and Diane are really hitting it off, aren't they? Have you ever seen Marie do her disappearing tricks? No, why? I was just thinking, wouldn't it be super if she could make Miss Stoddard disappear? Diane Braddock. Has Kay shown up yet? Uh, no. I hope she went back to sleep. Look, why don't you two go ahead? We'll catch up with you, huh? Oh, all right, Matt. Come on. Okay. Kay! Oh, there you are. Oh, so much sunshine in the middle of the night's revolting. Whose idea was this? Miss Warren's taking us on a nice long hike. Mm -hmm, I'll kill her. Look, you don't have to go along if you don't want to. We're going to hike up a mountain. It might be pretty tough on you. Listen, laddie. After riding a cab all the way here, you're not gonna lose me on some stinking little deer trail while you romp with a hired help. Mush. Oh, look at the pretty view. A lot of water. Miss Stoddard, isn't this fun? I'm hysterical. Come on, Diane. Okay. Do we have to keep on with this bunion derby? Ask teacher. You know, teacher, she's a mountain goat. Come on, mush. Uh. Up there? Uh-huh. You sure? <laughs> Come on, slow pokes. Go on, <laughs> Hey, Evelyn, five minutes for a breather, huh? Five minutes? Even horses get ten. Tired, Miss Stoddard? Oh, I'll give you that bizarre idea, Miss Warren. I always climb mountains on my knees. <laughs> well, it's not far out of the top, see? <sighs> From here, it looks like a good day's force march for a troop of Spartan infantry. <laughs> There's a lovely meadow up there, just carpeted with wildflowers. Wildflowers? Oh, really? Yes, you see, it's Diane's day for nature study. But I'm sure we can all profit from it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on. Opsy-daisy. Oh, opsy-daisy yourself. Here, darling. Thanks. She's not much on a hike, is she? I take it you don't like Miss Stoddard. No, even if she is a friend of Daddy's, I know she's only nice to me because of him. Creeps, I wish we could get rid of her. Diane, you mustn't say such things. Diane! Well, we made it. Oh. You all right? I've now qualified for the Girl Scouts. <laughs> oh, hello, Diane, darling. It was quite a trip, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Miss Stoddard. I was just thinking, you must be very tired. I am. Why don't you take the shortcut back to the house? The rest of us can go the long way. Oh, darling, I wouldn't think of it. <laughs> You're very sweet, but I simply couldn't bear to miss all the fun. <laughs> I simply couldn't. It didn't work. Diane has become so thoughtful under your skillful guidance, Miss Warren. But it won't work. If you think I'm foolish enough to leave you alone with Matt Braddock, dear, your psychiatrist bait. I suppose I should thank you for the implied compliment, but really, you're wasting your suspicions. My only interest in Mr. Braddock is as the father of the little girl I'm trying to help. With a gent like Matt, that might be enough. For an opening, that is. Well, really, I don't know what to say. After all, I'm just a plain school teacher. Save the eyelash batting for the menfolk. I just want you to know that I'm sticking as long as the body holds out. And when that collapses, I'll still be around as a haunt. Don't you 
Don't you think we have enough, darling? After all, we're not opening a florist shop. Oh, I guess so. Oh, those red things over there would look awful pretty with these. Those red things over there? All right, dear. These? Yes, those. No, 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 no. Don't. You'll be up and around in four or five days as good as new. I had poison oak once. It's dreadful, I know. What am I going to do, lying here in bed and... Oh. Now, 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 now. Mustn't scratch. Now, now, yourself. Mustn't itch either, but do. Just keep the compresses wet and apply the calamine. If you need me at any time, feel free to call. Oh, we'll take good care of her, Doctor. Just take it easy. You'll be okay in no time. Of course. And we'll oh. have cocktails every day in your room, won't we, ma'am? Sure. A little family gathering. Well, I think we should let the patient rest a bit, hmm? Yes, good idea. See you later, Miss Darling. Oh, and remember, consider me on call at any time of the day or night. Uh, practically. <laughs> Daddy. Gee, Daddy, I feel awful. Awful? Why? It's all my fault for taking her to pick flowers with me. Oh. It was your idea, huh? Well, sort of. Too bad Kay can't be with us to enjoy this lovely night. You know, the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced I've got a clever little daughter. Really? Now, whatever makes you think that? Something tells me that if it hadn't been for her, you and I wouldn't have had the last three days alone together. Well, it may sound cruel, but it has been sort of fun with Kay laid up in bed. The doctor says she's practically cured. So how about some deep sea fishing tomorrow? You mean before she gets uh -huh, up? Bright and early in the morning. Sounds good to me. Fine. Look at the way the moon bounces off the crest of those waves, like streaks of silver reaching down. I didn't realize you were a poet. I know, I'm a dull dumpling when it comes to making pretty talk. What kind of talk do you make? Must have some attraction. Ladies come from distant cities to listen to it. Okay, oh, she's just... An old friend of the family, I know you told me. Notice how she simply can't tear herself away from Diane. Oh, Kay's all right. She's just not the motherly type. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. It's these high heels. Not exactly beach wear, I'm afraid. Well, why don't you take them off and go barefoot? It's swell on sand. That's a wonderful idea. You know, I haven't done that since I was a little girl. Oh, it feels good. Sand's nice and cool. No, I like that perfume you wear. It's always the same one, isn't it? Yes, it's my favorite. It's beginning to be mine. I notice it around the house all the time. Oh, oh, ouch. I stepped on something. It's probably a broken shell. Here, sit down, huh? Take a look at it. Let's get the sand off first. No, I don't see anything. You don't? Teacher. Yes? You gotta learn something. What? What to do with your lips in the moonlight. Is this for Diane's benefit? No, I wasn't thinking of Diane. Well, then, Matt. Yes. Do you... do you... Go on, say it. Do you mind getting me my shoes? Oh, good morning, Diane. Good morning, Miss Stoddard. I didn't expect you out of bed so soon, hmm. but I'm glad you're better. Oh, it feels wonderful after being cooped up for three days. What are you doing with those binoculars? Oh, just looking at the ocean. Oh? Where's Daddy and Miss Warren? She and Daddy went fishing very early this morning. Did they say when they'd be back? This afternoon sometime. Would you like Marie to fix you some breakfast? No, thank you. I just lost my appetite. Well, it looks like the fish have all the luck today. Not even a nibble? Nope. That boat over there must be doing all the business. Maybe we can buy some from them. Huh? We better bring home at least one, or people will never believe we really did go fishing. Come to think of it, why did we? Guess I don't have all my marbles anymore. I've got to use fishing as an excuse to be alone with a girl. <laughs> uh, it's been swell, for me at least. I hate to think it's almost over. Over? 
Oh, sure. A couple of more days and your sentence is up. That was a deal two weeks. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, what a change in Diane. She's like a different kid. You've cured whatever was wrong with her. No more moping, happy all the time. You've knocked out a miracle as far as I'm concerned. Well, now you can get back to your normal routine. I'm getting a gambler's hunch. My routine won't be normal anymore. Back here. Careful, man. For a professional, you're playing your cards rather carelessly, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You might lose that freedom you're so jealous of. It's a big pot to lose, isn't it? Even for Diane's sake. Let's take the fishing. I'll take a look at the lines. Oh, we're not getting any action. Maybe we'd better turn back. Why, well, I, I don't know. The uh, motor just decided to give up the ghost, I guess. Are we out of gas? Of course not. We had a tank for when we started. Oh, fine. Looks like we're going to be out here for a while. Oh, what a shame. But I don't mind if you don't. What are you doing? I'm going to try to track that fishing boat. He can haul us in. Well, we don't want that. What? Well, I mean, can't you fix it? Are you kidding? I know even less about motors than I do about women. Welcome, my friends. Welcome aboard the... Oh. <laughs> Welcome aboard the lousiest fishing boat out of Monterey. Well, much obliged for the lift, Captain. My engine cocked out. Those launches aren't very dependable, I guess. <laughs> you think your engine is bad? <laughs> Wait till you see what runs this mechanical garbage. Well, just the same, we're very grateful to you. We might have been in serious trouble if you hadn't picked us up. <laughs> you are still in trouble. <laughs> this cow leaks like a sieve. One that hasn't sunk long ago. <laughs> oh, well, it may any minute. Well, it certainly looks sound enough. Hey, don't you believe it. <laughs> Every timber is rotten. <laughs> if we hit anything harder than seaweed, you won't find out. <laughs> hey, Pedro, make the launch fast to a stern line with door. Hey, Manuel. Maybe not very far. All my tow lines are Rotten too. <laughs> oh, how I was gypped when I bought this floating piece of cheese. <laughs> oh, then you're the owner. Good. I'll pay you to take us back to Carmel. Just name your price, Cap. <laughs> Have I got the joke for him? Well, what is it? <laughs> we ain't going back to Carmel. <laughs> We've got to get back. Then you get back from Monterey. That's where we'll be tonight. If we're lucky. On our last trip, it took us two days to go three miles. <laughs> three miles. <laughs> we can make faster time if we roll this cow. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, you poor no. boy. You'll never know. No. <laughs> Two days. Ah, two days for three months. <laughs> I take over, Pedro. Yeah. You better go see to the next, see if they are still there. <laughs> see, Manuel, see. Well, it looks like it's blowing up an economy-sized hurricane. That's what I like about California. If you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. I certainly hope our happy captain was only kidding about those rotten timbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not quite as romantic as, as our little boat, is it? Oh, I don't know. Our little floating home was never like this. Oh, no. No. Oh. Oh. What's the matter? Am I that hard to take? Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're upset, aren't you? No, I... I'm seasick. Oh, you poor kid. Look, I'll see if the skipper can scare up a little hot coffee. You stay here and hang on to the rail. And don't give up the ship. All right, Buzz, get this dump Estaba in. Pull, Miguel. In the depressor. What do you think I'm doing? I'm pulling an etzel or rough. Come on, come on. Take up the slack. Bringing in a load, eh, Skipper? <laughs> no, just bringing in the nets. The lousy nets we got won't hold the load. <laughs> Say, have you got some black coffee? The lady's a little seasick. Oh, 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 just like my wife. Hey, Pedro, come over here. Every time I bring my wife along, it almost kill her. <laughs> but I keep trying. Here, take over the wheel. Come on, I'll get you something. <laughs> Here. Oh, 
What's this? <laughs> That's the medicine my wife takes. It never fails. Oh, thanks, Kibber. Let's hope this will get her to Monterey. Let's hope something gets this boat into Monterey. <laughs> all right, sailor. All hands on deck. I know just how you feel. Uh oh. Come on. Into the galley. There's a burial at sea. Take long. <laughs> You're going to be all right. <laughs> I'll drink some of this, you'll feel better. Silly boy. That's terrific stuff. Yeah. How you like it? Feels warm. Oh, good. <laughs> Feels warm. <laughs> That's just what my wife said to me. Come on, keep at it. Oh. Oh. Come on. Never more. <laughs> All right, Pedro. Go on. Get back to the nets. And tell Miguel to pull. Hey, ya! Go on. Please, leave her well. Don't fool around. Not feeling any better? <laughs> Wonderful. I think you're better off here in the cabin. You ought to lie down for a while. I don't want to lie down. I want to catch fish. I want to catch a lot of fish. Big fish. Would you throw me a fish? Oh, you're juice to the eyes. What's this stuff you've been drinking? Skull. Down the hatch. Oh, well, that tastes like straight alcohol to look at with bourbon. Holy jumping mackerel. They are? Well, let's catch them while they're still jumping. I want to catch a shark Evelyn, with my what are you doing? Head. Come down, Aubrey. I want to take a high a dive. Shark. <gasps> <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I told you before, this pile of junk is falling apart. Sure Everything is rotten. <laughs> Hey, what was in that stuff you gave her? Oh, little this, little that. My wife makes it herself, right. what you call a leftovers. Leftovers? <laughs> she takes a gin, whiskey, beer, wine, rum, brandy. Whatever's left on Saturday night, she puts together for Monday. <laughs> I want to catch fish. Big fish. Oh, no big fish, honey. Little fish. No. Anchovies? <laughs> Not today. I'm taking you to the cabin. Come on. No, I can't do it. The sea's in my blood. Come on, inside. Gotta catch fish. There she blows. Hey. <laughs> hey, easy, easy. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Come on, leave her. Come on, Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> if the kid's in your class, you can see you now. Thank you, girl. Come on. Thank you. Well, did you have enough? I was only kidding. I'm going to catch them all over again. Oh. Yeah, we catch you. She throws them back. Can you imagine oh, that? What? I don't feel so good. Again? Come on, it's real duty for you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just like my wife. <laughs> Sleepyhead. Come out of the fog and greet the setting sun. Mm. Oh. Oh, my head. It, oh, it's killing me. Well, after that seagoing Mickey laughing voice slipped you, you're lucky you've still got a head. Oh. Can't remember much with it. Did I do anything disgraceful? Oh, no. Outside of throwing half the fish overboard, doing a rumba on the wheelhouse, and singing a hot version of Barnacle Bill the Sailor for the crew, I can't think of a thing you did that was out of line. Oh, it must have been terrible. I... Oh, you were wonderful. Oh. Where'd I get this? Well, that's mine. Yours was full of fish and salt water. Oh, they didn't smell much like rose water, did they? <laughs> well, you, you took very good care of me. Uh, like doing it, too. Even playing laundry man. Oh. Uh... You know, you're kind of cute when you're asleep. What a horrible thought to have a man ogling you while you're snoring. Oh, no, I was thinking mostly. Mm. You know, Evelyn, these last few days have changed my thinking a lot. And my feelings. I don't understand that. Oh, what I want to say is, let's call off our little deal. You know, get off that be nice to me just for the answer kick and tell each other just how we feel on our own. Well, I'm listening, Matt. Well, okay, I can't think of a better place to go off the deep end than a boat. So I... I'm in love with you, Evelyn. You don't know how I've been waiting to hear that. 
You're hearing. Now I'm listening. Oh, Matt, I... Uh, excuse me. We're going to be in Monterey pretty soon. Maybe seven or eight o'clock. I don't know how we did it, but... Uh... I say, we're going to be in Monterey pretty soon. Uh, excuse me. Who's here? Good to see you, Kay. Liar. And where have you two little playmates been all day and half the night? Well, you know perfectly well we went fishing. I don't see any mackerel. Wasn't that what you went after? Or was it? Look, look Evelyn, I I'd like to talk to Kay for a minute. Hmm? Oh, certainly, Matt. See you later. Kay, there's, there's something I've got to tell you. Oh? How am I doing? But you can't be serious, Matt. I'm beginning to think you don't know what you want. I'm not a kid. I know what I want. But it's no good, Matt. Why, she's from a different world. It's like mixing champagne and water. The bubbles die and what's left is flat and tasteless. You and Evelyn have absolutely nothing in common. Oh, yes, we have. We're both in love. Nonsense. You're talking like a schoolboy. Yeah, I know, and I'm going to marry teacher. Oh, look, Kay, let's quit the cute talk and get down to facts. I'm marrying Evelyn because I love her. This is it, Kay. You do mean that, don't you? <laughs> so be it. I hope it won't frighten you if I tell you I'm not giving up. Well, you might as well. Always cash in your chips when you start losing. Only suckers play it the other way. I never thought a school teacher would be the one to finally beat the house. Well, I might as well pack my bags and head for happier hunting grounds. I think it'll be better if I leave tonight. Well, that's more like you, Kay. Thanks. Hello, Braddock. Surprise, Braddock? Yeah, what is this, a return match? Oh, we got no fisticuffs in mind, boy. Just want to talk. Oh, talk, huh? All right, come on in. Sit down. Heard from Reno lately? No. Why? Well, you see... Well, it's uh, like I told you, Matt. We still want to buy your place. But it seems some of the boys got impatient and roughed the joint up a little last night. They took your manager to the hospital. Nothing serious, but I guess that's why you haven't heard from him. Right. Easy now, easy. We'll take care of the hospital, Bill. It was all a matter of business. You know, like uh, preliminary negotiations. Yeah, you see, Matt, we figure a nice guy like you has got no place in the gambling racket. You're too much of a gentleman, so we want to buy you out. Yeah, I see what you mean. And maybe you're right. You mean you'll make a deal? The price is the same. Yeah, boys, I'll make a deal. I want to get out anyway. You see, I'm getting married. Married? Oh, brother, you just think you're through gambling. Oh, I'm through, all right. Here's the dough. Oh. Ninety grand in cash. Yes, yeah, sign this before you change your mind. Come in. Oh, hello. I just remembered my tennis manners, so I'm jumping over the net to congratulate the winner. Oh, why, thank you. You're doing it quite gracefully, too, I might add. So many stub their toe and fall flat. I do hope you don't. Or haven't. Would you care to expand that a bit? Well, after all, my dear, you may be a master psychologist, but your experience has been confined to children, hasn't it? Well, it's been said that men are just little boys. What a novel thought. I must remember it. However, Matt has quite grown up now. So I think I can forgive him his uh, childish mistakes. You have a delicate touch, lady. I hardly felt it where I was stabbed. Well, I'd like to say the best gal won. But I'd be such a liar, wouldn't I, darling? Well, don't worry about that, darling. It covers so many other deficiencies. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have something really important to attend to. Ah, that's the last. Better be, or the lady will have to run alongside the cab. 
Well, is the safari all ready to push off? I don't know what to say, except goodbye. Don't even say that, laddie. It's one word a lady doesn't like the sound of. Look, No, yeah. no, no. Keep it gay. Cleaned up a lot of unfinished business while you were upstairs changing. Really? Yep, Kay's gone. Ah, she took it swell when I told her I was in love with you. And I unloaded my gambling joint. Well, I mean business. A pretty good price. All in one night. I figured you wouldn't want your husband to be a gambler. Don't worry, he never will be. Well, the time has come, Mr. Braddock, for me to tell you that it's been grand. Mr. Braddock? What's been grand? Oh, I don't get it. What is this, a gag? I thought we'd well, finally... Of course you did. You thought a lot of things. And do you know why? Because you're not quite bright, Mr. Braddock. Because you think you know women. Well, you can't handle them like those pasteboard ladies in a deck of cards. Even when you shuffle them crookedly, as only you know how. Then you weren't on the level. <laughs> Listen to the man. Don't those words sound a little strange coming from you? Of course I wasn't on the level, as you so brilliantly put it. You made a fool out of me, and now that I'm even with the house, I'm quitting. So if you'll excuse me... That's the cab I ordered. Goodbye, Mr. Braddock. And I hope it will be of some comfort to you to know that you learned your lesson from the teacher of the year. You act funny. No, no, nothing's wrong. Go to sleep now. You can't fool me. There is, too, something wrong. I can tell. Well, okay. I, I might as well tell you now and get it over with. Miss Warren's gone, Puckins. Gone? But where did she go? Back home, I guess. Anyway, she's gone for good. But why? Did I do anything wrong? Only one thing. The same thing I did wrong. We believed in it. I'll explain it all to you some other time. Right now, we've got to discuss plans. You and I are going on a trip together. Trip? Oh, that's right. We're going to get on a big boat and go someplace, oh, someplace exciting. Maybe Honolulu, maybe... Or maybe we'll go all the way around the world, just the two of us. It's you and me together from here on in, Pumpkins, always together. That'll be wonderful, Daddy, but... Oh, no, don't worry. We're going to have some good times. Look, i, I got to go out to Reno tomorrow and take care of some business. As soon as I come back, we'll take off, okay? Okay. We'll take good care of each other. Uh, you bet we will, Pony. And that, in a few sordid episodes, is the story of my little vacation. Those carefree days in Carmel when I had nothing on my mind but mayhem. But believe me, I got even with him. But you're happy now. Of course I'm happy. Look, putting that cheap gambler in his place was worth more than $7,000 to me. Rather a poor substitute for love, I'd say. Love? Who said anything about love? You didn't. But it's pretty obvious that the tender emotion is making it difficult for you to digest your lunch. Nonsense. Why do you think for one minute that I could love that, that, that man? And from what I gather, he was all man, wasn't he? Well, I... Oh, excuse me. Hello. 
Yes, this is Evelyn Warren. Carmel? All right, operator, put them on. Hello. Oh, hello, Marie. What? Diane's run away, but why? Well, how could she? Last night, after I put her to bed, she packed a bag and sneaked out. I didn't know it until this morning. She left a note saying she was in the way. Here, I'll read it for you. Dear Daddy, I hope you will forgive me for leaving home. I have decided that I am in the way. I took the $18.21 I had saved in the piggy bank, and I'm going to another city and become a teacher. I hope now that you will be very happy. I still love you, Daddy. Your daughter, Diane. Oh, but poor silly baby, it's ridiculous. But why are you calling me? Where's her father? I don't know. I don't know. He left here and I can't find him any place. Oh, mademoiselle, please, come here quick and help me. I'm going crazy out of my mind. Have you notified the state police? Good. All right, Marina, just don't go to pieces. I'll be there in a couple of hours. I'm catching the next plane. All right. Mrs. Howell. Will you drive me to the airport? I've got to get to Carmel. Diane has run away, and, and that good-for-nothing father of hers has disappeared with his deflated ego. Of course, dear. Oh, mademoiselle. Marie, have you heard anything? Nothing, nothing. What can we do? What will I tell your father when he gets here? Did you get in touch with him? Finally, he's going crazy too. Well, it just doesn't seem possible that Diane would run away from everyone she loves. It's because she loves so much that she runs away. Just like it says in the note. Oh, I feel wretched about this, Marie. It's my fault. I, I might at least have explained things to her before I left. I... What things, mademoiselle? Oh, I... It doesn't matter now. Marie. Marie. Matt, thank heaven you come. Has there been any word? No, Matt. Are the police covering all the roads? Everything has been done that can be done, like I told you over the phone. I can't understand it. She's never done anything like this before. Maybe she never felt like this before. Let me see that note. Here. Oh. I've got to do something. Calm yourself. There is nothing you can do now. We just have to wait until we hear from the police. Who's that out on the terrace? Oh, I forgot. Mademoiselle Warren. When I couldn't reach you, I called her. If you hadn't acted like a selfish fool, this wouldn't have happened. You dare to call me selfish? What kind of a father are you, anyway? Leaving your daughter to run off and lick your wounds. I ran off. That's real cute. You're the one who pulled the hit-and-run play. My only regret is that I didn't hit hard enough. I'd hate to be around when you were in real form. Don't worry, Mr. Braddock. You'll never have the opportunity. Well, at least that's one thing I can be thankful for. What brought you back here? Baby, it's going to work. Everything is going to work. They are fighting like they're already married. Are you sure, Marie? Of course I'm sure. Come on, let's get ourselves some seats in the front row. Come on, Aunt. So your precious dignity got a stone bruise and you decided to get even. What a laugh you must have had making me fall in love with you. You call that love? You haven't the slightest idea of what it's all about. You were just shopping for a mother for Diane anyway. Look, school teacher, I'm going to tell you a few things about love you may be able to use if you ever run into it. Let go of me. Not until you get a big helping of the truth. I don't know where you get your notions about love, but you think about it instead of giving into it. You cut it up into little parcels labeled puppy love, young love, mother love, as if they weren't all different brands of the same article. You're afraid a man won't want you for yourself. You think all I want is a mother for Diane. Well, what man wouldn't want the woman he's in love with to mother his children? That's something to be proud of, to share and to cherish. Remember that the next time you bump into it. And the next time, don't bump into it with your head. Bump into it with your heart. I don't know why I stand here yammering at you for. I, I gotta find Diane. Daddy! Don't go. You haven't made up yet with Miss Warren. Oh. Oh, dear. Diane. Oh, darling. Are you all right? Are you really all right? Of course I'm all right. Oh, but darling, where did you come from? From the kitchen closet. The, the what? Well, Mr. Braddock, I suppose this is another of your sleight of hand tricks. You stood pretty low just to bring me back here, didn't you? Me? After what you did? Why, you must be off your rock. Daddy. Please. This was my little trick. I couldn't see two grown people in love with one another make such fools of themselves. Mademoiselle, I knew you wouldn't come back for Matt, and I knew Matt wouldn't come back for you. But I knew that both of you would come back for Diane. I'm getting very annoyed at you two arguing all the time. You're getting very annoyed. Do you realize that a crazy stunt like this could scare a man to death? Why, I've got a Daddy, good mind to... don't you love Miss Warren? Well, of course I do, but... Good. And don't you want me to be happy, Miss Warren? I do. Then I now pronounce you my mommy and daddy. Kiss me. <laughs> Parents are such awful children, aren't they? 
Film Café torna domani alle 14. Movis 100, tra poco, su Studio Universal.